My name is uh, Pastor Aaron Stretzel. I'm a lead pastor here at One Church. Um, Happy New Year. Um, I guess technically it's Happy New Year's Eve, uh, just in case you were like, wait, what happened? (laughs) It's not quite 2018. Let me ask a question. How many of you guys have made or are planning to make New Year's resolutions? Raise your hand. Wow. There's about 10 of you. <laughs> how, how many of you are not going to make New Year's resolutions? Uh, the vast majority here today. Um, well, good for you guys. Um, today, also, we're going we're gonna to do a very reflective service. So, as you can tell, I have a little bit of a cough. I went back to Colorado, and I stopped in at my brother's house, and my brother and my sister uh, were coughing and... My, their family were coughing, and then we went to my other sister's and brother-in-law's house, and they were coughing, and my sister could hardly talk, and we were like, thank you guys very much. This is going to be great. So yes, they passed it along to us. After we got back Thursday evening, uh, we got sick, which sounds like there's a lot of you sick. So I'm walking and standing in solidarity with my sick <laughs> brothers and sisters <laughs> out there. Uh, so today, where we're headed... We're going to talk a little bit about 2017 and create some space for you to reflect on this past year. We're also going to talk about 2018 and allow some space for you to reflect on 2018. Um, Unfortunately, if you were coming here looking for a deeply inspirational New Year's sermon, I'm sorry to let you down. You won't find that here today. What you will find and what I... um, What I love about having a smaller community is that we can change things up quite a bit and and allow for some space in a smaller community. So we're going to do it differently here. And this reflects actually a lot of a deep conviction of mine, which is there's two ways of doing things primarily that I see within religion. One is to try to tell people what to do, um, and that can be somewhat forceful or teaching. And another way is to try to create space and allow the spirit to do what the spirit needs to do. And so that's what we're going to do today. And I I believe that if you engage in these things, that the spirit will speak to you wherever you are at in the ways that the spirit needs to speak to you. Um, So, uh, unfortunately, since not very many of you are making New Year's resolutions, this may not apply to you. But (laughs) some interesting statistics about... New Year's resolutions. On average, about 45% of Americans consistently make New Year's resolutions. I think here it's probably like 5% of our congregation. (laughs) Um, Anybody think of the most common or have a guess on the most common New Year's resolution? Yep, exercise more. Um, Not to be a Debbie Downer, but statistically... Yeah, yeah, about 22% of those resolutions fail the first week. Um, 40% of them the first month, 50% after three months, and 60% by six months. So halfway through the year, already half the people, half the Americans made them, and then half of those did not succeed. But don't worry, I believe in the 10 of you here today that are making them. <laughs> Americans alone drink an estimated 360 million bottles of champagne during the holiday season, which is ironic because of the second most common New Year's resolution, to drink less. (laughs) So we get it all in early on. Um, Around 38% of people claim to never make a New Year's resolution. Again, that's probably like 90% here today. And the number one reason for failed resolutions is not having a clear goal. So if you do, if you're among the 10 here, just make sure you make a clear goal. And if you're not among those 10, well, cheers to you. (laughs) Um, (coughs) We just finished up Advent. Advent uh, is this Christian season where Christians celebrate the 40 days leading up to the birth of Jesus. And we talk a lot here in One Church Community, bless you, um, about preparation, anticipation for what God might be birthing in your life. I love uh, the idea of a new year. So now we begin to to look forward to what's coming in the next year. Uh, And I actually really like that. Um, I haven't made any specific New Year's resolutions as of yet, 
but I really like this idea of rhythm. Uh, there's days, they're not all the same, they now extend forever. There's a new day tomorrow. How many of you have gone to bed recently and said, hallelujah, I get to sleep and this is behind me, right? There's new weeks and there's new months and then there's a new year. And I think it's important to pay attention to those rhythms. Somehow, for some reason, they're there for us. And so 2017 is coming to a close. We're looking on to 2018. Many people are planning, not here, but generally, for New Year's resolutions, looking forward to that. And even if you're not, I'm sure you're anticipating and looking forward to what is this new year going to have for me. And so uh, one of the things that has been clear, hopefully, in the teachings uh, from one church, if you're newer, um, this might not, uh, this hopefully will resonate, but scripture, the Bible, what Christians call our Bible, our holy scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, some people look at that as it's a systematic theology. It's very clear. Everything, you know, A to B, or A to Z, <laughs> A to B, uh, A to Z. This is how God works, basic instructions before leaving earth. This is everything I need to know. Another way uh, that I have found that has been speaking to me much more is that it's a collection of writings from humans spanning over a thousand years of their encounter with the divine. It's almost as if to say you cannot contain God in any sort of systematic way. As soon as you think God acts one way, well then there's another story where God acts this way, right? And it's funny how we still try to do that. Like there's one way, even though our book is filled with so many different ways and authors and perspectives. Today, uh, that being said, I think <coughs> we can find multiple ways where God speaks and leads people, often in advance. Um, just a few quick um, uh, stories um, that we see, and just mention them. There's lots of them, but one of the first ones is in the story of Abraham, uh, then called Abram, where God says, I promise you will be a father of many nations. And that did not take place till years and years and years. And he followed God, moved from his hometown down all around and didn't see a child until he was much older. It took years and years for that. And, and that's an interesting story because from what we know about Abram, which isn't very much, he comes from a different land where his, at least his father worshipped other gods. And so it is interesting, like how did he even understand Yahweh? at that point in time, and how did Yahweh speak this to him? And, and there's a lot of questions I have, but whatever that is, he felt something that led him into a different course that drove his life, where God was speaking into it years in advance. Um, another example is Moses, who met God at a burning bush, and, and God called him to deliver the people of Israel. And he had been a shepherd for 40 years, and of course the question was, I, I cannot understand how I could do something like that. And yet he took that encounter, which drastically changed his life, and says, even though I don't understand, somehow I have to do what God has called me to do. Then you have Jacob, um, no, not Jacob, Joseph, sorry, who had a dream, a little bit of a cocky dream, where his brothers bowed down and worshiped him, <coughs> which he told his brothers, and they sold him off in slavery. Um, <laughs> and so it didn't work out too well. But eventually that dream did come to fruition, and he also interpreted other dreams of a famine coming. So it's interesting how, was it God speaking? Was God speaking and Joseph was just there to listen at the right time and prepare and help save lives? There's a lot of questions I might have about that. Ezra in Nehemiah, after the exile, comes back and after their temple has been destroyed and the walls have been destroyed and they have an, a vision of creating a new temple, new walls, and work to do that. Many kings throughout the whole Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, sought God for their leadership and their people and God somehow spoke to them, often through prophets. Also Mary, an angel appeared to Mary to prepare her for the birth of Jesus. So part of me wonders, does God have a dream for all of our lives? And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that works. I think God has a dream at least 
for all of us together as a community, and I would call that the dream to see all things flourish, all of us, including our environment, creation. And I think God has a dream that we're a part of that. And I don't know, we've talked about this before in the past here at One Church, how specific that is. Does God have a specific job? One person for you to marry? Um, does God have your whole life planned out? What, I don't think so. But where it gets blurry is how much of that is planned out and how much isn't. I, I'm not so sure. And, and, um, but I do believe that God works with us. And whether the dream kind of originates within our hearts or comes from God, I, I don't know. But I think that God partners with us when that dream is good. When it is about love and grace and justice. And when it brings us life. And so um, today as we kind of imagine 2018, I'd like to invite you to open up your hearts and open up your imaginations to say, what might God have for me? And at the same time, if that doesn't work, maybe what is the dream within me? And it may be both of those. God, where are you leading me? What is the dream within me? How does this work? Being open to that. I think imagination plays a big role. Dreaming your way forward, the imagination, creating a future. I, th I just love that idea. A and I love the idea uh, that he reflected that in many ways what we see around us that somehow God imagined before and the imagination of God to create all that is and the imagination we each have. Um, Albert Einstein said the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. William Blake wrote, what is now proved was once only imagined. What we see around us was really an imagination of someone else. And oftentimes, an imagination of someone while well, everybody else could not see what they saw. And it took people being able to envision, imagine something that wasn't in the imagination of other people and wasn't yet in existence. Henry David Thoreau wrote, the world is but a canvas to the imagination. A future is there to be created. Um, this gets into a little bit of theology and what God does or doesn't know or foreordain um, but whatever it is God seems to co-create with us um, it's difficult to find any stories throughout scripture where God acts apart from humanity <laughs> always in and through humans in the ways and even in their limited cultural understandings even if they understood God in ways we don't understand God now, which actually brings me hope <laughs> because I can guarantee my understanding of God is not perfect, probably not even close. And so God worked through people's understandings in years past. How much more can God work through our understandings now as we co-create together? Again, there'll be reflection questions up on the screen. But maybe even as I was just watching that video, the, the question might just start with, what do you dream of for 2018? What can you imagine for yourself for 2018? And just see what the Spirit works in and through you. So um, other questions, uh, these will also be on there. But I'd like maybe just start with, what do you imagine? For the future and, and at the end here you can write these down maybe and come back to them another time but the last one on there um, I think is important and helpful and I know for for some of us we we might not understand God the same way but I think if we open up ourselves whether we call it God presence universe that often we receive things whether that's an image or a word maybe for 2000 and 18. And what's interesting is when I've done this in the past, which hasn't been often enough, and I've reflected over the year, it's sometimes really crazy how that word I thought meant this, and then over the year, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could see this here and here and here, but in very different ways. 
and, uh, and reflecting back. And I think the, the Spirit of God works in our lives in that way if we open ourselves to that. So let's go ahead. We'll play the next song, and uh, we'll start with just that, that question, what do you dream of for 2018?